So hi YouTube, welcome to the Emporium Outdoors. My name is Michael and today we have Esme as well as Simon. So today's video is just a quick test of my Levu tent that I just finished putting together last night. I wanted to demonstrate with a bit of ingenuity and a low budget you could afford to go winter camping, winter hot tent camping as well. So the shelter behind me I built for less than a hundred US dollars and this would be suffice to go winter camping even in somewhere like Canada where the temperatures get very low. I don't have a stove in it, so that would be extra to this, but the essence of the shelter itself is all here. Everything you need to actually make this work in very cold temperatures is actually behind me. So let's start with the materials. First of all, I have two Polish Levu tents, and this is a medium. You can tell by the number of grommets in the, in the corners. This has two. One would be a small, three would be a large. So this is a medium size. And this is perfectly good for someone who's five foot nine or around that sort of size. There's lots of room to actually lie down. You could sleep two people in these tents, um, but obviously I'm building this as a winter tent, so it's really gonna sleep one. Two at an absolute max, or one person as a dog. So the other materials are two number 10 zips. These are plastic ones, and these are 150 centimeters long, and there's one on each side, so the tent can actually be entered from both sides. So the little retainers on the side I use by cutting the shoulder uh, piece of fabric that's actually on the inside uh, and reuse that as well as some of the uh, draw cord I made these little button fasteners to hold back the tent. The tent can be used as a series of configurations having entrances on both sides to tie back like this. Also I have the stove jack that I've inserted. This is a pre-bought stove jack. I don't think it's worth building your own stove jack, not for the price. I think it's a lot of work um, and they're just cheap and easy to sew in yourself. So that's what I've done. I also sewed on a little rain flap above just to help direct the water over the top. I don't really consider this tent a wet weather tent. I certainly wouldn't use it in a downpour. I know they, they can be, but I would certainly want to treat it first of all. Uh, cotton is great to a point. Once it's saturated, it does tend to drip, um, but it does work. I mean, I, I would use it in a push, but in a winter tent, cotton is probably your best friend because it is breathable, it sheds snow very well, and it's very durable. So this is a great choice for snow and ice and things like that. So the other addition is I put in a vent at the top. It's kind of like a tunnel type vent. I'm not sure the correct name. I actually copied it from other tents. Uh, but that's a great way to put it up high so you can open that up and actually vent out any of the hot air that you have in the tent because hot tents tend to build a lot of heat on the top of the tent and because this is quite short uh, you're going to cook yourself out if you don't have some way to regulate it. It's not super big but I think it's enough just to uh, get rid of that excess heat. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the other configurations with this tent. Now it's set up like this. So this is a great way just to have it during the day so you can get to all your equipment, have it open when it's sunny and warm, and then close it up for the night time. The large number 10 plastic zips, I think it'll do really well in winter because they are so large and you could even use them with gloved hands. There is an additional method for venting as well if you didn't want to put in a vent like mine, is the top of these things you can just unfurl. And you can have the vent this way too.
So I have one or two tidying up pieces to do with the tent. On the zip covers where they actually overlap, I have to put some Velcro to actually hold that so they won't open in the wind. When they're in a tension, they tend to pull apart. So I just need to sew some Velcro in. That may add another $5 to the overall cost of the tent. After that, I consider this ready for service. An optional upgrade you may want to consider is sewing in an optional short wall. Putting in the short side wall will raise the tent up and actually give you more internal space because you're not confined to those tight corners. Which means putting in a piece of fabric, probably about 12 inches, 10 to 12 inches, around the, the bottom of the tent. Uh, I plan to do this as well as to leave a small snow skirt. And the snow skirts are very useful in winter. Obviously you can actually bury those and it will seal the tent even better. So that's something you may want to consider. That may add on about 20 or $30. So for the stove, you would only need a very small stove. I have an existing stove, which I think is probably too big for this. Uh, this is a Snow Trekker stove. I think it's the medium sized one or small. Uh, I'll link to it, obviously. And I think that would cook me out of this tent. So I'm looking to build a smaller stove. Uh, it will either be a two or a three inch pipe. I think I may reuse the, uh, the pipe I already have for the Snow Trekker, because why not? And that's a three inch but the stove itself will be much smaller. I think the stove will probably set me back maybe $100 to make it with the steel and materials I'm gonna put into it. And uh, I'll show you that when it's time to actually test the stove out with the tent. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of what you can achieve on a small budget if you do wanna go winter camping. And I hope you like some of the ideas that I've put into this levy so far. And if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them down below. So until next time, take care. I've left links to all the components used in this build in the video description below. And if you'd like to support the channel, I've also linked my Amazon store, which does generate a small income for Esme and I to make these videos. So I hope to see you on the next video, and until then, take care. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.